Good day everyone. Welcome to Learn with MN. In this video, we will discuss about clones in the Inkscape. Clones are copies of an object that stay linked to the original, also known as the parent object. This means that any changes you make to the parent, like resizing or changing its color, those changes will instantly show up in all its clones. Let's say I want to make a clone of this star. For this, select the star, go to the edit menu, then clone, and select create clone. You can also use the shortcut Alt D, or just click this button here. This will create a clone of the selected object directly on top of the original. Now, if I resize or rotate the parent object, its clone will change the same way. Even color changes will be applied instantly on its clone. That's why it's called a live copy, as whatever you do to the parent, happens to the clone too. Clones are super useful for creating patterns, grids, or designs where multiple objects need to stay synchronized. When you use create clone, it makes just one clone of the selected object. But what if you want more than one? There are two ways. The first method is to use the shortcut Alt D repeatedly. Each time you press the shortcut, it creates another clone of the selected object. You can keep doing this to make as many clones as you need, and place them wherever you want. The second method is even faster and recommended. In this, after creating a clone, we will use the clone itself for making copies using the spacebar. Duplicating with the spacebar is known as stamping the copies. For this, select the clone we created, then hold the left mouse button to move it, and press the spacebar where you want the copy to be placed, like this. Each time you press the spacebar, another clone is created, and you can position each one right away, like this. This technique is useful for quickly creating multiple copies in different locations. Since all of these are clones of the original parent object, so, any changes made to the parent like resizing or changing the color will still affect all the clones, like this. You can transform each clone individually, like resizing or rotating them like this. But they'll still be linked to the parent for any other changes. This star is a single object, and in Inkscape, only one object can be cloned at a time using Create Clone. If you want to clone more than one object together, then group them first and then clone the group. For example, let's say we want to clone these objects together. So, first, select them all, and group them. Now, when you create a clone, the entire group will be cloned. Grouping objects gives you more control over both the whole group and each object inside it. You can edit the group as a whole, or make changes to any single object within the group. Those changes will also apply to all of its clones, like this. You can also add new objects inside the group by entering inside it. It will automatically appear in the clones as well. You can clone the original object as many times as you want. But the fun part is that you can also clone a clone. This is different from just duplicating a clone, which we did earlier. Earlier, we made copies of the clone. Here, we're talking about creating a new clone from an existing clone. For example, this is a clone of this object, and we make a clone of this clone, like this. If you change the original object, both the first and second clones will update, like this. But if you change the first clone, then the second clone will be affected by its parent, like this. In simple words, the original is the parent of both clones, and the first clone is the parent of the second clone. So, any changes to the original will affect both clones. But if you make changes to the first clone, then its child that is the second clone will be affected. Till now, we have seen how clones are updated when changes are made to their parent. However, you can still make independent changes to each clone, like transforming them. For example, you can resize or rotate each clone separately, like this. But when it comes to fill and stroke colors, you can't change a clone's color independently. 
If the parent has a specific fill or stroke, then changing the parent's color will automatically update all the clones. To allow clones to have their colors, we need to set the parent's fill color to unset. Once that's done, you can apply any color you want to the clone, while the parent remains black by default. However, if you change the parent's color afterward, all clones will follow that new color again. Clones can be very useful when used as clips and masks, giving us a lot of control over how the shapes look. If you're not familiar with how clips and masks work, check out our video on clipping and masking, where we explain them in detail. You can find the link in the description. For example, let's say you're working on logo variations, and you want the same logo to appear on different backgrounds, one dark, and two light. To do this, we can use a clone of the original logo as a clip. Let's say we want a one-color logo, in this case, teal color. First, make a clone of the original logo. Now, take the background you need, and duplicate it because this duplicate will be the clipping object. Give it any random color for now, just for recognition. Next, place the clone on top of the background. If the clone is behind, bring it to the front, and adjust it as needed. When happy with your settings, select both objects, right-click, and choose Set Clip. As you can see, the logo is now clipped with the random color we choose. All we need to do is change the logo's color to teal, and it's done. Similarly, duplicate this clipped logo, and change its colors to suit different backgrounds. The best part of this method is that any changes you make to the original logo will automatically update the clipped versions, saving you from having to redo everything. Likewise, you can play with the masks too. This is a really fun feature. With so much control, and by combining it with effects like textures, blurs, or shadows, you can create some impressive results, even your custom mockups. In Clones submenu, there are some more options other than Create One. Let's discuss each one by one in detail. Tiled Clones is a powerful feature in Inkscape that allows you to create multiple copies of an object in a grid-like arrangement. It offers full control over the size, position, and even color of each clone. It's perfect for creating patterns, repeating designs, or exploring more complex layouts. While tiled clones is quite a detailed topic with a lot of options to explore. So, we've dedicated an entire video to cover it in depth. Make sure to check out our full tutorial on tiled clones, its link is in the description. As you've seen, clones are linked to their original objects, meaning any changes made to the parent will automatically reflect in the clone. But sometimes, you might want to break that link and turn the clone into an independent object. To do that, simply select the clone, go to the Edit menu, then Clone, and choose Unlink Clone. You can also use the shortcut Shift-Alt-D, or this button here. Once unlinked, the clone will behave like a regular object, and changes to the parent will no longer affect it. If clones are part of a group, using Unlink Clone won't unlink them individually. For example, we have some random objects and here we have their separate clones, and here their multiple clones are grouped. If we select these clones and unlink them, and now make changes to the parent, only single clones will be unlinked. It won't work on the group that contains clones. To unlink clones within a group, you'll need to use Unlink Clones recursively. For this, select the group, go to the Edit menu, then Clone and select Unlink Clone recursively. This option will unlink all types of clones, including those inside groups. On the other hand, Unlink Clone will only work on individual clones or entire cloned groups. If you have clones for an object but you want them to relink to a new parent object, it's simple. First, copy the new object to the clipboard. Then, select the clones you want to relink. Go to the Edit menu, then Clone, and choose Relink to Copied. The selected clones will now take on the appearance of the new parent. Any changes made to the new parent will automatically affect the clones, like this. 
If you have a lot of clones and can't remember where the parent object is, no worries. You can easily find it. Just select any clone, go to Edit, then Clone, and choose Select Original. This will highlight and select the parent object. You can also use the shortcut key Shift D to quickly select the parent of a clone. The Clone Original Path LP, in Inkscape is a live path effect that allows you to clone an object's original path data while giving you additional control over certain features compared to a traditional clone. We've dedicated an entire video to cover it in depth. Make sure to check out our full tutorial on Clone Original Path, its link is in the description. That was all for this video. If you have any queries, feel free to write in the comments section or contact us on our website, its link is in the description. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon, so you don't miss any updates. Thank you for watching.